Mon nom est Jeanne, j'ai 19 ans. Jurez de dire la vérité. Je le jure. Maybe because no portraits of her survived, we decided that she is our faceless, imageless saint, with endless possibilities of even better portrayals. Or maybe because her life is visually as rich as a life can get. Everything from wars, innocence and devotion to tears, churches and mutilated corpses. Or maybe this piousness to our martyr maid is rooted in our failure to understand ourselves. But one thing is for certain, that in our failure to give birth to modern gods, we have found solace in the immortal sacrifice of her dying spring. We found something profoundly moving in witnessing devotion, of seeing and being shown someone in rapture, so committed and confident in their beliefs, to only fight for causes you yourself have shaped, with which you identify and burn. Because not even in death that we are ever excluded from beauty, our entire life is for beauty. And who would dare to say that what we have destroyed was worth a hundred times more than what we had dreamt and ceaselessly transfigured in prayers to the ruins? Because our patron saint, Joan, treads alone on the brink of death, like a grave walking in a sphere of light, thus impersonating something more divine than the victims themselves. By embodying the dead already, the dead too soon, the dead before their time, perhaps even paralleling the undead, escaping the collective massacre, but drawn now into a different solitary march, a procession of the aggrieved, becoming what is at once most dead and yet refuses to die. Maybe because her judges asked her, are there any images made in your likeness? Or maybe because she replied gallantly, how else would God speak to me, if not through my imagination? Not too different from her executioners, we, as modern men, are willing and even eager to burn all that resembles or even dares to have the scent of the divine. No different from the man in Rossellini's adaptation, who is dressed in a pig costume and is repeatedly yelling, I am the pig, I am the pig, and finally volunteers to judge Joan at trial. When asked by a sceptical bishop if St Michael the Archangel spoke English when he appeared to her, Joan retorted, Do you think the angels speak the language of our enemies? Is a funny, light-hearted proof that God has always despised the English. Because who among us did not wish to live and die for something they earnestly believed in? Who among us did not, at least once, bend at the thought of God? Because who among us did not recall St. Augustine's sacrificing words, But what do I love when I love my God? Not the sweet melody of harmony and song, not the fragrance of flowers, perfumes and spices, not manna or honey, not limbs such as the body delights to embrace. It is not these that I love when I love my God. And yet, I love him. Because it is not the Godhead who judges me, nor the Demiurge who betrays me, but Jesus Christ who will always forgive me for who I am. We always jokingly said you can know a man by his favourite Joan of Arc portrayal. She would get angry at me, because how would I dare steal her only worthwhile saint? The one and singular woman who truly inhabits my engorged heart. My personal favourite will always be Bresson's, not because of technique, narrative or even pure artistic merit, but because for Brisson, he made sure that a dog would witness the burning. Although animals do have their own code of violence, it seems that they remain appalled by the unbridled brutality of human beings. Towards the end of her life, Joan, a 19-year-old girl, fearful of the flames, 
repents to save her own life. But she later changes her mind, powered by a newfound sense of devotion. Tell me, how can you still believe in God? One of the judges asks. She responds, God moves in mysterious ways. By the end, she faces a terrifying fate for any mortal. But Joan looks up to the heavens, filled with the promise of eternal paradise.